Welcome to yet another episode of Founders Gyan. This week's guest is Mr. Pramod Hegde, the CEO and founder of Bro for You. That is B R O and then the number four and then the letter U dot com. They are one of India's first marketplace for services, and I've personally used them multiple times, and I've always been impressed by their service and support. So this is going to be a great episode, guys. So don't miss this one. Also remember that we still have the AGC 2015 contest running. All you have to do is answer. I'm the unstoppable entrepreneur because fill in the blanks. Head over to www.foundersgyan.com/agc. That is A for Apple, G for God, and C for Cat for all the juicy details. Remember that you can win a free pass worth rupees five thousand four hundred and ninety-nine as part of this competition. Finally, as part of this podcast. Bro for you has kindly provided a special coupon code, which will give you rupees three hundred off on any service if you use their app. So you have to listen to the podcast to get the code. So I wouldn't miss it. The service is great, and what's more, you get three hundred rupees off if you use their code on the app. So please listen to the show carefully for the code. Now let's get on with the show. <music> What did the man say? Give me a lever long enough, and I'll move the world. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here. This is divine inspiration, folks. Pramod, welcome to the show. A quick brief on Pramod. He is the co-founder and CEO of Bro for You, India's first ever online marketplace for services where customers can book nearby service providers. Before Bro for You, Pramod did his MBA and has worked in investment banking banking firm for about four years. I am super excited to meet you and thanks a lot for taking time out of your busy schedule to share your knowledge, wisdom, and time with our listeners. Thank you, Pramod, for agreeing to be on the show. Sure, thanks a lot and thanks for having us in the show. It is always you know encouraging for the budding entrepreneurs like us to reach to the wider audience. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Pramod. Sure. Uh, so, Pramod, can you fill in the blanks? from the intro about your journey before pro for you sure so my journey is like you know uh, i'm from a rural place a place called as chikmagalore in karnataka where i came to bangalore about 7 uh, 8 years back mm-hmm. trying to live in this uh, society where you know i studied in uni college before mm-hmm. it's quite a bit of you know 7 to 8 years of experience because i was seeing like you know uh, how we can sort of contribute to the better Uh, sort of city mm-hmm. uh, so that's where you know our big brothers like flipkart snapdeal came and they revolutionized their you know product industry that we never thought that we would buy a mobile phone right in uh, you know the internet yeah yeah i just bought one two days <laughs> back my phone broke i got it the very next day right, right. so that's kind of you know revolution these guys are trying so goes to the uh, you know the appreciation for ola guys So that's how we were thinking. Like you know, what else is left in this market to actually create that big impression? Then we thought it is uh, the services. So uh, it was in my MBA days. I always wanted to aspire uh, to start something of my own because most of your MBA days is all about uh, you know how you become entrepreneur, how you create the company. They will never teach you about to join the companies as an employee. Right. But ninety percent of the people turn out to become that. So even in my case, that was the same. After my MBA, I joined to one of the uh, you know US based asset management company. Mm-hmm. It's called a State Street, which mm-hmm. was the second largest asset management in the world. Mm-hmm. So I managed to live my life three years over there. But you know, every time uh, I was going through uh, the uh, sort of city, right, I was always understanding the immense amount of opportunity in this space. Right. Because uh, the colleague who is sitting next to me, he is always uh, wondering like how to get. Uh, maybe the priest to my uh, home for getting a puja done, or when I want to move my house, I want to go from Indra Nagar to you know MG Road. They were struggling hard to get these service providers. Right. So then I thought, uh, you know, this is the time I need to quit the job. And I remember that Friday I put on my papers. Right. And I uh, you know reached my co-founder, I mean co-partner Rajat. Right. And he was in a, a steady state that he said, "Let's start it from tomorrow." Okay. And that's how uh, the journey before Pro for You is, and that's the day you know we started Pro for You. Okay, excellent. <laughs> so uh, you've said it in one sentence, but maybe can you explain a bit more about uh, first of all what is Pro for You sure. and 
how did you guys come up with this idea okay uh, i understand that you are always thinking that there is something you can do in the internet space service space sure. now uh, and also maybe explain a bit about the name i i, I know okay. there's a interesting story behind the name so sure. yeah <laughs> uh, so how we come to the idea idea is very simple uh, that everybody know it's a pain of everyday people life right. uh, that uh, you know i want to get a carpenter right. uh, maybe i want to clean my water tank right. i have a car i don't know where to get it washed right. from right. or i want to get my laundry done so idea is pretty much there right especially if you are in the corporate world yeah. i think you don't have time for doing all these things right. right you That's have right. to kind of take time out from work That's take right. a personal day off to do all these things correct right okay yeah go on absolutely like you know today uh, the busy life in this corporate is making people to look for the convenience right so we are trying to sell the same like you know right. we thought uh, convenience there is convenience is there in product you know when you buy it half kg tomato also there is a convenience this big basket is bringing right. you so we thought you know this is something big there's very few people are recently started trying or it is not tried in fact right uh, so that's kind of industry the you know services what we are dealing with it's purely uh, a, an organized segment where you want to really make it organized right so that's where uh, we decided that of course idea has a market and people are using it but just that we need to uh you know align them to the more proper channel which right. will uh, sort of bring more convenience to them mm-hmm. so that was all about the idea and you asked me about the company name right so after all studying a lot of you know mba degrees right we were mm-hmm. uh, knowing one thing mm-hmm. that when you uh, put a brand it should be such that you know people should remember that right you should not spend lakh or crore to make your brand remember in a people right. i remember alibaba uh, you know see what jack ma saying he wanted to give one name Uh, which people can quickly remember the moment right. you hear that right. that's how we also come with the name called as bro for you.com right so in an uh, uh, you know high level uh, when we actually put this name right uh, we quickly ran it with my state street friend back in my corporate days okay i just said one time the name and next time they only repeated that name back to me it's like mm. one impression they heard right. meaning that you know when you say bro for you we are trying to uh, be your everyday help right so we would be uh, that brother to sort of help you right because we thought even uh, a a sister who looks good at her brother and you right. know it's such a corporate fashion that whenever you want to help you will start using bro maybe right. i'm calling you with your name now the moment right. i want some help i will call hey bro right so that's where uh, we come up with the name and um, that's where people actually recognize us fast bro for you yes okay <laughs> excellent excellent bro i, I will add <laughs> so um um for a budding founders listening out there um can you tell us how to come up with a good idea what's what's your uh, advice on coming up with a good idea so i think uh, there is a say that everybody has an idea mm-hmm. uh it's just that they start evaporating it fast i mean uh, you talk about something there is an idea mm-hmm. uh, when we don't act on that on the given time right it will start evaporating that's right. why you know in world you cannot have ip on the idea mm-hmm. like you know you can create intellectual property for something you have developed but not on your idea right. so that's why the risk with this idea is that will evaporate fast so right. the moment you get one so tease it tease it with couple of your friends couple of your critics you know they will say oh my god this is bullshit but you know take that right. and uh, if a lot of people talk negative about that or a lot of people talk positive about that yes there is a power for that right. if people hear that and say yes maybe there is something wrong you need to develop it in a better way mm-hmm. so i feel that way i mean uh, so that's where you know we also have started like you know when we actually reach to couple of people right they said oh my god i want this oh my god i'm missing mm-hmm. it so that's where uh, the idea mm-hmm. is I okay mean, e- take, yep. e- excellent so i just want to touch on this before it disappears or evaporates from my sure. mind <laughs> sure. um you said even if an idea is negative mm-hmm. if people are giving you negative feedback even then you are saying it is powerful so why do you say that do you have an example of uh, a negative idea that maybe is is why do you why do you say even if it gives a wrong impression to people it's good so i mean uh, idea has a validity i would call because mm-hmm. you know when you actually take a particular industry and you have some idea over there mm-hmm. if there is a established player over there your idea is outdated because right. you know there is already people trying to solve right. the best example i feel is housing mm-hmm. when they actually came to the market there were huge big players who were like you know 99 acres some of the big players right. the moment they come up with something similar idea you know uh, people actually hesitated to take that the reason is right. you know there's already established players right. 
maybe this is quite outdated right so maybe that's the reason they would have taken about 7 to 8 months to come up with their first fund support right based on that you know they made it quickly i mean right. I, I meant in that way like you know right. idea has a validity right. and when you say that i want to do a product selling today everybody will discourage you because right. you know there are big players who are doing that right right i mean when a lot of people say there is a negative in that, maybe you still believe in that. I think you should go with that. Okay, okay, <laughs> excellent. So, so basically, the idea should stick with you and people. That's right. Either in a positive way or in a negative way. That's right. It shouldn't be okay, neither here nor there. Correct. Right. I feel so. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, next, let's talk about ideation to creation. Now, what are the steps that somebody needs to follow in order to make the idea into a reality, or you, you could maybe even. Tell us about your own story sure. uh, and how did you, uh, once you had the idea, you quit your job. Right. How did you, how did you uh, launch the product? Right. What, so what steps did you it's take? It's again a question that you know depends from man to man. Mm. Uh, so like you know, there are a couple of people who go directly to the fund and say their idea and they get their support and start. Right. There are a couple of people who go and develop a prototype and then uh, they seek the support. There are a couple of people who develop the team and then they really show that it's a model and then they will go. We fit into the later one. Okay. What we actually did is the first thing is you know quitting the job. I mean that's everything is very obvious. So right. the moment we quit the job, what we thought is, even though I'm sort of serving my notice period over there, you know, waiting for next two months would certainly uh, sort of evaporate my idea. That's right. why what I did is the moment I put on a paper, you know, we started developing the team. Right. That's where we come up with the 15 awesome guys on a, on, a, on a matter of next 15 days. Okay. And that's what actually made us to sort of diversify our risk mm -hmm. to a bit and also to achieve the goal uh, in a very efficient way. So how we actually started is half of our guys quit the job and half of the guys were still working in their corporate. Okay. And that was actually helping them to do their daily earning. Right. So, so that's how we actually started we built a team and we thought these guys should go for business development this guy should go for product development this guy should go for you know the awareness and creation of the penetration of the market right uh, so that's what we did and initially the motivation which was uh, very much helpful I believe because I believe I mean I remember a lot of times we hear a lot of motivation factor to make sure that we crack that right because you know uh, today to bro for you is having about uh, 700 service provider in the platform mm -hmm. and we get as much as uh, you know 100 to 120 uh, uh, transaction a day mm -hmm. and about uh, 3,000 4,000 visits we get right. but you know if I go back uh, that six months before it is just nothing a piece of paper you're trying to do right and that time I feel uh, you sort of want to exchange the motivation not you are giving the motivation you're trying to exchange the motivation right and you're quickly acting on the product like right. you, know, you think about this tomorrow you need to execute that right it's right or wrong a bit you just want to compromise with that but make sure that you create the next milestone next milestone Till now, we are working with a milestone. <laughs> okay, okay. Excellent. So, I just want to touch a bit on this team creation. Right. Now, you said you first went ahead and created a team of 15 people. Right. Now, without a product, without funding, yep. how did you manage to do that? Were they all known people, unknown people? How, how did you actually build a team of 15 without anything? Right. So, uh, it's again uh, uh, the power of idea, what we mm. will call. Uh, because uh, I mean, uh, when we started, it was quite an untapped market. That's one thing. Right. And when you actually proposed the idea, there were people who are sort of you know taking that idea in. Mm -hmm. So in that fashion, we initially started reaching to the known people, mm -hmm. uh, maybe our childhood, uh, you know, high school friends. Right. Post that, you know, the chain developed. Like you know, their friends, their unknown friends. You know, we managed to uh, group up with uh, about fifteen people, where two people were supporting from Mumbai, where we didn't have any touch with them. Right. So it's like you know the power of idea, and we thought on a day-to-day -day basis we will show some progress. Okay. That itself made a lot of people to come and support us. Okay. Uh, okay. That's how it happened. Excellent. And. Did you give your initial employees uh, some sort of uh, equity in the company to, right. to uh, and do you believe that it is important to do that, give equity in your first employees so that they will be as motivated as you to make the product a success? Right. In our case, uh, I mean, uh, we didn't start with that employee uh, motive at all. Right. So we thought, you know, everybody are pretty much equal to create something good. Mm -hmm. So in that fashion, we wanted to make the model even investor friendly as well. You cannot say that everybody are, you know, taking a chunk of it and right. business make no sense. Right. In that fashion, yes, on a day one, we started uh, believing that there is no employee concept the moment you start the company mm -hmm. because it's all about, uh, you know, empowering people and being the co-founder alone. Right. Like in that fashion, you know, 
know uh, the the way we started is everybody were uh, you know uh, sort of a owners for their own group but we wanted to make this even the investor friendly the reason right. is you cannot cut check it in such a fashion that nobody will buy your model right uh, so in that fashion from a day one itself we said that you know what the market is big even uh, the the 1% of your 100% worth more at some point in time so let's all share in a very proper way in that fashion we developed a esop model okay in that we have uh, started giving a chunk to our early guys right and we have also put a bit of that for our next funding supporters okay okay excellent and and you would recommend doing that right that's, right. that's so very important because uh, when you create something which is materially not existing it's all in a paper right. you always want to empower the people in a better way okay you always want to empower people to take some ownership because that's what you know motivate people to come today i think in our case every of the 15 20 guys they are done with their corporate life you know money was not the factor which was you know motivating them it is something else which is motivating them maybe a sort of ownership a sense right. of ownership okay excellent yeah. Excellent. We all hear about founders sacrificing family time to make their ventures a success. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about your family and how you manage to balance business and family? Okay. Uh, so my family wise, you know, uh, my uh, mother and father they are very supportive for whatever I am doing. And one of my sisters, she is working in uh, Vijaya Bank in a, a senior leadership role. They are very supportive and. Uh, that's quite right i believe you know we want to sacrifice a bit it's not sacrificing a bit because uh, when you actually want to create a model it's not 8 hours you can work you want to work about 15 to 16 hours a day which right. will pretty much you know occupy all of your days right. in my fashion i don't remember when we last went for a party or a movie okay. uh, it's pretty much uh, the bro for you now okay. the, when saturday comes it's no different or monday comes with no different but every morning we wake up with a sort of satisfaction that yes we have achieved something which would certainly make you know uh, a value proposition to the market or something like that that itself will motivate us right okay <laughs> excellent now uh, i you did touch upon this a little bit that your first uh, few employees were uh, got esops but right. can you tell us a bit about your co-founders how many people are actually the co-founders of the company right and uh, how did you meet them and also how can would be for uh, would be founders meet co-founders uh, so first of all my schooling friend rajat mm. i uh, i remember that friday i called him and said that hey listen uh, we speak in our own mother tongue like now hey maga we need to do this right. and um, he sold out fast and he said yes let's make it fast then the next day i went to my native and you know i spoke with their parents and my parents and we quickly dealt it Right. They are our own source, right? Right. So that's how I met my uh, co-founder uh, Rajat, okay. who is pretty much taking care of all these service partners and quality, uh, you know, aspects today in our business. Because in our business, there is two keys: one is handling the users, another one is handling the service providers. So if there is little imbalance between both of these, the right. whole model will fail. Right. And he is pretty much taking care of, you know, one of the very important part of the business. Okay. So the next is Akshay, who is a technology guy. Mm-hmm. Um, who work with accuracy like you know the kind of work he does mm-hmm. uh, it sort of make that you know he's perfect in that if you mm-hmm. could have a look on our website as well or mm-hmm. a mobile design mm-hmm. we pretty much have followed our own standards of design which makes every user to come and say that hey listen your website is good mm-hmm. so in that fashion you know akshay is taking care of that so he again is a known guy okay. uh, who sort of met and that's how you know the whole team is okay. you know from akshay we came to know someone from rajat we came to know okay. someone okay from my source i came to know someone okay uh, and and So that would be your recommendation. Just go with people you know. Try to reach out through your contacts uh, for co-founding. Initially, uh, uh, I think that's the easiest way of selling yourself. Unless mm-hmm. you have a strong entrepreneurial background or mm-hmm. some strong financial background, I think that's the easiest way of doing. Like you know, people should trust you, right? You don't right. have any track record before. Right. You know, I think going with a known people initially is always good. Right. And when we see a lot of successful company, the co-founders are pretty much known guys. Right. Right. either yeah. through business or right. personal yeah? Right. yeah yeah okay is there a morning or a daily ritual that you follow can you share it with myself and our listeners okay <laughs> so first of all you know uh, we don't have that uh, sort of standards i hear a couple of people uh, wake up around 5 o'clock and they start their business but in our case you know we pretty much do everything you know i remember at days we do a massive testing of our product and second day we go to the service provider and do the marketing and next day we will seek the customer service and we sort of experience that how to talk uh, in that fashion you know uh, the time is so improper for us that we will become occupied almost every time 
but I would say we don't actually uh, you know uh, wake up around six o'clock or something like that. But you know we start our day around eight o'clock, mm-hmm. and uh, from eight o'clock night three o'clock it is all busy. Okay. Uh, okay. Only work, only work, only work. Okay. You see a lot of challenges. You know the greatest. Uh, 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 I mean, the fear in this business is, you know, are you going to make unhappy a customer? Like, you know, we don't want to take chance when it comes to customer unhappiness. We have a zero tolerance when it comes to customer satisfaction. If one customer says that, hey, listen, I'm not very happy, that will give us a sleepless night. <laughs> okay. okay, excellent. Right. Okay, uh, can you tell us about something else about yourself that is not commonly known? Uh, so, I don't know anything like that, but, you know... Uh, Maybe we talk a lot of uh, big things in our life. Okay. Uh, a lot of lot of big things that you know we even talk about making our company a unicorn company in next two years. How? So this is something uncommon in nature that you know a lot of people tend to not believe. Only few people will believe. Right. We talk a lot of big things. Okay, excellent. <laughs> that's that's really nice to hear. Right. And what is the best advice somebody has given you, or alternatively, best advice that you have heard? So the best advice I was seeing one of the status message of one of my friends whatsapp uh, you know contact he said uh, the only good thing what we did is we never gave up so that's a good uh, you know advice what i feel okay i mean i think it's the american pro one of the guys said the genius thing i did was we never give up i think some linkedin or twitter founders who said okay. that inspires us a lot <laughs> okay excellent excellent we are halfway through the interview sure um now let's talk a bit about inspiring uh, listeners so startups come up with a lot of uh, pressure. So can you give us some tips on how to handle pressure when things aren't going well? Uh, first of all, I'm still learning uh, that I could not tell you that, you know, I have handled a lot of pressure. pressure. Uh, so what we initially do is we tend to leave a portion of pressure to a couple of our guys all the time. But, you know, uh, what we have to tell is, uh, I mean, we will have a bigger goal. Uh, the goals are so big that you know you need to partially go and achieve that mm-hmm. so when you say that I want to go from 1 to 10 it's mm-hmm. like a, you know you know, you need to connect the dots as Steve Jobs said mm-hmm. from 2 to 3 T to 4 like you know I mean the process itself will help you understand that how to go from 2 to 3 2 to 4 and something like that mm-hmm. so in that fashion I think we can certainly reduce the stress of uh, you know managing everything but mostly startup is such that you know it's mostly unorganized by itself. Right. Slowly you will start organizing that. I remember uh, five or four months of business we ran in our residential, uh, you know, apartment where uh, when you sit in that bean bags and all, right, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, so you cannot take too much of stress. You know, you tend to sleep on an afternoon basis <laughs> itself. That you know, that's how the startup works. Right. But we will quickly match that up in next one hour. So right. that's how. <laughs> okay. Okay. Excellent. Can you tell us about uh, an extreme low point? in your uh, uh, professional life and how did you turn it around and the lessons you learned from that experience um, so that's what you know one thing I said about this customer satisfaction mm-hmm. because you know mm-hmm. uh, we go to the market and say that hey listen we are the first one we are the fastest growing marketplace that's everybody will say right and you reach to the customers and you win their trust and they tomorrow comes and take a pain of you know downloading your app mm-hmm. or coming to your website and they book a service if ever, if you are not managed to give them a happiness or a satisfaction mm-hmm. what they are looking at, mm-hmm. is something will make a lot of lot of bad things for us. Like, you know, it will screw a whole day for us. Like, you know, mm-hmm. how you could take a chance of your own customer. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, did something happen? Do you have a story that you can I mean, share with us? There is one story I can certainly share right. where a uh, uh, very high profile customer, one who uh, sort of booked us, okay. uh, she heard our story in one of the news channels that these guys are startup. She wanted to take a chance okay. and she booked her, uh, uh, you know, cake for her uh, uh, husband's first, uh, you know, uh, birthday after their marriage. That okay. was the first, uh, you know, birthday of post their marriage. Okay. So what we did is we gave to a couple of our service provider and we thought that's under control. Okay. And we unfortunately managed not to deliver. o'clock we came to know from a message from her saying that mm. you know uh, you didn't deliver the cake. Mm. So you understand, right? You know, it's a first marriage event. I mean, the first right, birthday right. event for them, and we took chance in that. Right. They would never come up with that kind of you know moment again. Right. So that was one of the incident I still remember. So what we did is next day we uh, went to our house and we took a flowers and cake and we delivered uh, mm-hmm. personally. Okay. But actually the damage what we have created on that moment, right, mm-hmm. which can never take us back. Right. So that kind of lesson will tell us 
a sort of story every day that you are dealing with a mm. very very serious thing of the people mm. so 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 how did you manage to kind of uh, turn this around in future so right. what what steps did you take to kind of uh, avoid this mistake again right we are still learning in that part mm. uh, so the thing what we have done is in a in a corporate or in a mba days we learn something called as six sigma multiple chuck to uh, get the service delivered right. in that fashion what we have did is we strong our you know operation part mm-hmm. that when a customer request come you want to have either technology taking care of that otherwise a manual effort which were and all necessary mm-hmm. which can potentially nullify this kind of risk okay and we quickly took that lesson and you know we are <laughs> okay sort okay. of developing there okay yeah. excellent now let's research a bit on bro for you sure. um i i think uh, you were just mentioning a story uh before we started this interview about uh, some of this uh, uh promo codes that you are giving to uh, uh to the transgenders i think that would make for a good story could you right. just tell us a little bit more on that right so uh, when you take any of the e-commerce or a hyper local business right so what is your major chunk of work is to create the awareness to the people right and that's why uh, the people in this segment go with a lot of vc funding purely for this reason right so we have a multiple challenge of reaching to the customer so right. we go to the facebook which is a prime uh, uh, you know uh, traffic generator for us we go with a blog post we go with a google and we go with couple of you know uh, outside promotion as well so in that fashion uh, one of the opportunity what we have identified is uh, you know we actually created a visiting card sort of styled uh, you know our card which we will give to the people uh, handily that uh, the good thing is that they would not throw it off because it's not a pomplant paper it's a proper visiting card size right. uh, paper which will have uh, a prompting message to download our app and also it will have the kind of services we are offering so initially we started giving to the people and we got a good response from them mm-hmm. i mean the moment you give this kind of cards uh, they put it inside their pocket so then we started reaching to the more target audience then we identified this target audience comes in the uh, uh, you know the traffic signals traffic road and all i mean uh, you give it to the uh, very right people that will certainly convert us right because right. in the initial days we care about what is the spending we are doing right so in that fashion uh, we thought uh, the transgenders who are standing in the signal every day uh, and uh, you know they are sort of trying to uh, uh, you, you know do that begging activity every day just to make their living because right. they don't get job anyway they right. don't get the equal treatment the moment we see them we will distance ourselves right so we identified that one of our team member in our group called as sandeep who said why don't we take their support to you know give this card to the public mm-hmm. so that's how uh, we reached to them and we asked hey listen can you give this 1000 card to the people mm-hmm. and they said yes and that's how we actually gave a small portion of the money to them because we ourselves are small and that's how we exchanged the help and the good thing is that the, the the time they started giving it right people will take them seriously and see what is this they are giving so it's like taking the help each other like you know i think we have given as much as 30 to 40000 cards as of now wow. uh, that's okay. like uh, we have taken about 45 to 50 transgender support to reach there we do it in electronic city we do it in white field where uh, we are creating a small help for them we yeah. return they are helping us back yeah yeah i think i think it's a great social initiative right. because uh, I, i think these people they beg out of uh, necessity because right. i don't think anybody is giving them a job Absolutely. so i think what you guys are doing is brilliant so uh, i i really want to appreciate you for that Thank now what is the future you envision for bro for you uh first of all uh the vision itself is to be spa, you know fast mm-hmm. because uh the hyper local or e-commerce is such that when you sleep for a day tomorrow someone else will walk on you right so in that fashion you know we are trying to grow very fast from the day one we started mm-hmm. uh and that's how we have a very strong uh you know fast paced growth plan um uh, idea is that we want to hit hyderabad market in next 2 uh, to 2 and a half month mm-hmm. and we quickly want to go to the national capital and you know the mumbai region mm-hmm. uh, so that's our plan as stand and uh, we always want to sort of acquire a most you know more and more customers mm-hmm. uh, and that will in turn help us to you know onboard a lot of service providers so that's a high level plan of pro for you like you know uh, increase your uh, reach and go to a, a larger cities and create uh, a sort of you know strong base of vendors with you so that you know uh, you would s- certainly stand strong in the market okay excellent right. and what is the revenue model of bro for you do you take a percentage or do you have a fixed rate uh, how does it work and, right. and what's the are the rates uh, determined uh, 
by the mud by the service providers or is it determined at the time of the job how, how does it all work out uh, so first of all this is where we actually stand completely unique from our any of the small competitor available in the market mm-hmm. because we ourselves are a small and people are pretty much you know just resume this particular segment uh so what we are trying to do is you know we thought when you want to book a carpenter or a plumber mm-hmm. you always want to see their credibility see their profile see their gallery then you will feel comfortable to book them right. because they are coming inside your house to do a particular service we right. understand this part right. and that's how we have created our mobile application or a website which is creating a profile sort of thing for all the service providers which will show them how far they are from you how fast they can come and how many days they are in a market and what is the expertise they have so this will sort of make our users to uh, rely on the platform easily because you know they know whom they are booking the service with so that's how it works and in the platform we are trying to give most of the services you know upfront pricing like you know for a car wash it is about 350 rupee and a pest control it is about 1200 rupee okay. so this will answer all of our customer questions before they book so it's quite like a real time model what we have you just come to our platform and do a tap of click that you know you pretty much know everything and book the service your job is done and we will reach to that very service provider and who will come and do the service to you so that's a uh, you know the model is and the revenue model is very much on a transaction basis there are two way this market works one is on a request basis another one is a transaction basis so request is that you just post your advertisement in your platform i'm not sure whether that's going to get convert or not uh, we don't go with that we go with a second model that is transaction the moment you book the service we will ensure that a provider who does that and the service will get completion post that we will take a cut from the service provider okay so that's how we make the revenue okay and can we pay for this through uh, online or right. do, do we only have to pay cash to the service provider what options do you have uh, so we have both of the options mm-hmm. that for the services like car wash you know you can easily pay online itself like you know you can use a couple of wallets or an online payment and uh, we again stand different from our uh, any of the players who are in the market that even after the work right you can uh, pretty much get those payment links to your mobile and you can pay online there itself post the work okay. otherwise if you are comfortable giving cash directly to the service provider you can still do that okay excellent yeah. okay can you recommend any books or resources for our budding entrepreneurs <laughs> uh so one book i last uh, read was uh, steve jobs uh, the autobiography from uh you know i said walton okay uh that's one of the book uh, i think uh, <laughs> i would recommend because i like that book okay yeah excellent and uh, is there any software resource that you would uh, recommend for our startup uh, entrepreneurs some some software that you can't live without uh i mean uh, we always wondering like you know how this facebook how this google was making money because they were trying to sell everything free to me when i was a corporate professional or whatever So now these guys are charging us because we are a businessman right you know right. <laughs> but you know there are a lot of open source platform which you can use mm-hmm. because i remember uh, the content writing what we do in our website right that mm-hmm. was a lady she is supporting us from scotland okay and we are using softwares like team viewer and uh, whatsapp groups mm-hmm. uh, you know telegram uh, you know the facebook groups right uh, you know dropbox uh, you know onedrive so these are the best help for you at the startup level that technically these guys will help you a lot to uh, sort of achieve your goal with a no price or almost little price right. so that's how we use all of these services and i recommend the same to everybody okay <laughs> excellent excellent now bro for you is quite new right it's about 5 uh, months 6 uh, six, uh, six months 6 six months okay yeah. and has done quite well in the short span however if there is something you could do different Mm-hmm. uh what would that be if if there was something that you could do different in hindsight while starting the company what what would that have been um maybe we would have changed our uh, uh approach of reaching to the customers maybe uh-huh. if you are having a big fund we would have reached directly to the fm's television like you know maybe you would take 10 months to reach a audience you can reach in 10 minutes right. so that's what something we would have <laughs> made it differently uh but i think uh Six months have been so purposeful and you know uh, wonderful for us that you know uh, everything is working well for us as of now. So only thing I can imagine is maybe we can uh, do the outreach activity better if we had okay. a better chance. Okay, okay, <laughs> excellent. Okay, I I know we talked about this and there is a a coupon code that our listeners can use to get some discount on our services. So go for it. 
tell us the coupon code and tell us what's the discount that sure. we will get if we use the coupon sure exclusively for the uh, founders gan uh, you know audience right, right. Uh, we are giving you a coupon code called as b gan so it's b individual letter g y a n Uh, so use this coupon code and you get flat uh, uh, 300 rupee off on any of the service you're going to buy with us you just want to download our application and use that code store that money with you and whenever you get a requirement you can use that and we are very happy to serve you okay excellent <laughs> excellent thanks a lot bro for that right. uh, i just have one final question and before we go to that i just want to know how can our listeners get in touch with you uh, personally do you have a linkedin handle twitter facebook what are you active on sure being a hyper local uh, players right we are always active in our social media so i am in uh, facebook it's promote hegde uh, so goes to twitter it is promote hegde there and so goes to linkedin i'm again there with uh, promote hegde okay name. you have, you have captured all the right i mean right, 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 right. yeah <laughs> okay promote hegde on all three of it all of the three yes okay and uh, of course uh, proforyou.com as all the official uh, facebook linkedin twitter that's uh, right the, uh, your uh, company's uh, profiles so that's that's great um so uh, i just have one final question so before that i just want to take the time to acknowledge and thank you for sharing your knowledge to myself and our listeners awesome and <laughs> i'm also very grateful for the value you are adding into this world uh, by means of your service uh, i think it's a very essential and important service i I for one suddenly I'm going to check this out uh, once lot. <laughs> once I go back. Uh, with that we will move on to the final question. So if there is one gyan that you could give our would be founders what would that be? For the founders I'm still a new founder. For the people who aspire to become the founders what I could tell is uh, when you get that one idea don't let that get evaporate. So act fast on that. So that's the only thing I can tell. <laughs> okay. Excellent uh, advice Pramod. Thank you very much for your time and it was a real pleasure chatting with you and wish you all the continued success in your future. Thank you. Thanks a lot and for all the Founders Gan audience uh, do uh, uh, sort of support platforms like Founders Gan uh, because these kind of platforms are really uh, uh, doing excellent in the western countries which are newly coming to the country like India and more and more support we do to such kind of platforms also it's like win-win for the complete startup ecosystem. Okay. Wonderful guys. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> sure. There you have it folks another great entrepreneur another great story thanks for tuning in check out all the juicy details at www.foundersgyan.com/ep11 remember that the code b gyan that is b g y a n gets you rupees 300 off on any service if you use the bro for you app try them out you won't be disappointed if you found this episode interesting do share them with your friends and colleagues using the nifty share icons or just use email The address is foundersgyan.com/ep11. Also, head over to www.foundersgyan.com to check out the archive of all episodes, as well as foundersgyan.com/top to check out the top listen podcasts. I'll see you all next week with another great startup and another great episode. Till then, you know what this show is all about. I hope you got inspired and do take action today. Thank you all.